We're back with another Yay or Nay Monthly, where we recap what's in and what's coming to theaters as well as open form on a new monthly topic. This time around, the MPAA rating system. You're watching Yay or Nay Reviews. It's the monthly show. March has been an interesting month for movies to say the least. Hopeful's John Carter, a sci-fi failure, and Wrath of the Titans, a mythological failure, missed the mark terribly. But there are at least a few releases that are still worth checking out if you haven't already. 21 Jump Street, a hilarious comedy reimagining of that Johnny Depp show in the 80s. Hear more of what I thought in our full review. Jeff Who Lives at Home. The Duplass brothers are back after their indie hit Cyrus, and they're still as funny as hell. This time, an improvised movie with Ed Helms and Jason Segel. And of course, The Hunger Games. I went in without having read the books or knowing much about it other than it being a ripoff of the great Battle Royale. I thought it was a bit long in parts and didn't do much in the way of character development aside from Cat and Peter, but it held my attention and I found myself thoroughly enjoying it. That is, up until that anticlimactic ending, of course. My EA went to Venice huge as Megan's, but if you haven't seen our full review of The Hunger Games, you know what to do. That leads us into April, which brings us a couple of promising big releases to look forward to. Firstly, American Reunion. The entire cast from the first American Pie movie is back in action, so let's forget about everything after American Wedding and look forward to some good old Jim and Jim's dad comedy. Also, Titanic is being re-released in 3D, and believe me, I got a sneak peek of it back in February, and it's breathtaking. A lot of press has been swirling around the Farley Brothers imagining of the Three Stooges coming out this month, but from how pathetic the trailers have looked, I think I'll pass and go see the Joss Whedon horror flick The Cabin in the Woods that weekend instead. Now that you're all set with what to catch in theaters, let's talk about ratings. So before a movie is released, the MPAA, Motion Picture Association of America, looks it over and gives it a rating. G, PG, PG-13, R, or NC-17. These American ratings generally influence how a film will be rated in Canada, but each province in Canada has its own ratings board. In Ontario, that's the Ontario Film Review Board, where films are given a rating between G, PG, 14A, 18A, R, and A. The rating system is coming under fire a lot these days because once a movie is rated NC-17, which is equivalent to a Canadian R or A, most theaters won't show it. Movies that are typically graphic in any form, be it violently, sexually, or verbally, can turn an R into the dreaded NC-17, regardless of the artistic notion of the content. So what you'll see movies doing is watering down their content, even if the content is integral to the strength of the movie, in order to get a wider release. A wider release means more theaters showing the movie, more theaters showing the movie means more money coming in, which means bigger success at least financially. Recently, Reese Witherspoon's This Means War was hit with an R rating. Mick G, the director, wanted a PG-13 release, so we cut out some dirty jokes and BAM! PG-13. An R gets you in more theaters than an NC-17, but a PG-13 opens up the world. Do you remember the whole kerfluffle a few months ago when Chuck Norris stated The Expendables 2, a badass movie for badass action lovers, would be rated PG-13 or else he'd roundhouse kick the studio to the face? Here at least we've been assured the movie will be the hard R that fans want and expect. But it's still a big concern that people are willing to sell out their movie and art for an age appropriate rating in Almighty Greenback. This is something you won't see with foreign releases, but then again you're less likely to see them at all. Indonesia's The Raid Redemption will be hitting theaters starting next week, and it'll be a short limited run that will hardly be advertised on TV or in theaters because of its graphically violent nature. Yet it's still a great movie. The same goes for Japan's Battle Royale. Here's a movie that won multiple Japanese Academy Awards, but most theaters in America refuse to show it because of the graphic content. The reason that we're talking about this now is because of a movie that comes out next week, Bully. Harvey Weinstein's documentary about bullying in schools tells the story of bullies and victims in their own words, and it was hit with an R rating because the word fuck is used multiple times. With an R rating, this documentary can't be shown in schools or reach the audience it's intended for, bullies and victims of bullying in the school system. Here's a topic that's especially prevalent today where bullying can happen 24-7 at school, at home, and especially online. And the MPAA is keeping people from seeing it because of a four-letter word. Weinstein, God bless the fat bastard, challenged the MPAA and will release the film as unrated, which still means a limited theatrical release, but it opens it up to be shown in schools. Weinstein's willing to sacrifice possible significant income in order to see this movie reach its audience uncensored, raise awareness of the bullying problem in schools, and maybe help save lives. Here's to you, sir, and here's the question to you. With the controversy surrounding the documentary Bully, is our rating system out of date and too inflexible? Let me know in the comments below or join the discussion on our website, shouldyousteeit.com. And if you're still in a video watching mood, here's the links to our most recent reviews, The Hunger Games and Wrath of the Titans. One of them's EA, one of them's a name. Happy movie going.